Hello viewers, how are you? In this video, I'm going to show you a small demo how we can use Protobuf to exchange the data between two applications, especially two dissimilar applications which has been written in two different programming languages. And many of my uh, viewers requested me to make this video because I have made a video about uh, an introduction to protocol buffers and I have explained in that video how the two dissimilar applications can use the protocol buffers to exchange the data and so of course it's a completely theory but why can't make a practical one so that's the reason I'm making this video. As part of this video I'm going to give a small introduction to protocol buffers. If you want to know more about protocol buffers please click on the link showing above and later we go through the code how the Spring Boot application and a JavaScript application, how they exchange the data using Protobuf. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss my future videos. Protobuf is a new kind of data format to exchange the data between two applications. In all these years, you might have seen that all the applications are using JSON or XML formats. So if you have worked with SOAP web services, you might have used Wisdal document, which is a contract to be exchanged between two applications so that two applications know each other what kind of data it is consuming and what kind of data it is sending to the consumer applications. And if you have worked with RESTful web services, you might have used JSON format whenever any client application they want to consume the data from they should have the client application which is a rest client and usually we share the document in a swagger you know you might have heard about swagger documentation so which will define all the endpoints in the rest api so that you can easily build the rest client at a consumer application so that data exchange can happen but protobuf takes a different approach to exchange the data between two applications this protobuf data format can be used in the rest apis as well and any client applications can straight away make a rest call to the service api and can and can understand the data without any REST client or you no need to build any stuffs or skeletons at consumer side. Basically, we need to define a file called proto. For example, here you can see that person that proto. So you need to define this file. In a couple of minutes, we'll look into how this file looks like. So basically, this person that proto file should be shared between two applications and also we need one more component protobuf compiler for java application and if your other application is javascript we need protobuf compiler for javascript but you don't need to build this compiler because this protobuf or protocol buffers are created by google so they provide all these compilers for different languages so once you have compiler in your project just you need to build the project then it will generate code so that code is enough for your application to serialize and, and send it via wire. And the consumer application will have the auto-generated code by this compiler. So once you once that code exists in any consumer application, then easily it can end or decode the received data. So that's it. And Google provided all these compilers for different languages. And you can find it on uh, uh, Google. I will provide the link actually. There is a GitHub repository for Google. There you can find it. You can see here Protobuf support for different languages here Java, Python, Objective C, OB, and more. And also, if you want to download the Protobuf, call buffers compiler for specific language you go to this link releases on the same page once you click here it will take you to the page where you can download for different operating systems and different languages so protocol compiler protocol buffer compiler so for example if you are working on linux linux operating system you have linux and different versions like 832 32 bit and 64 bit mac os and windows so you can download this and you need to have this in your project and you can uh, also have to proto file along with this compiler just you need to run a command to generate the compiler code for you which will usually to be used to encode and decode the data that has been received there are many advantages using protobuf in your applications especially backend services communications so the data transfer happens in an efficient way we know that you know you don't need to create any rest clients or you don't need to have any special serialization processes because protobuf message itself is a binary format you know so machines can understand easily so that it can decode easily so data transfer happens in an efficient way protobuf messages relatively smaller than json messages 
it's almost half of the size of json document you know if you share the data in json format it's a huge especially you know when you data is uh, in high volumes you cannot uh, use json because uh, to parse it's a take a hell of time and hell of things so now we have protobuf you can overcome all these issues because protobufs are binary you don't need to have special serialization process machines can understand easily that's the reason it's uh, very easily decode the received data it's almost done in matter of seconds comparatively it's much faster than json so that's the reason protocol buffers are getting more and more popular we are going to see how how the data exchange happens between two applications we have on spring boot applications and javascript application which is a front-end application and we go through the code of uh, spring boot application and javascript application there is a nice documentation and tutorials given by google on their developers google website this is the link for that i will provide this link in the description section for you and you can go through the tutorials for different languages how you can create the proto file and how to compile the proto file using protobuf compiler from google for example if you go to java then you can see so you have to define the message in the format dot proto file that is the file and this file looks like this proto 3 is the latest version and we are going to use proto3 in our uh, sample application that i'm going to show you in couple of minutes so package tutorial this is the package name the option com example tutorial address this is the main message actually required means it's a mandatory field optional it's not mandatory and we have enums also in the proto this another phone number this is another message so repeated repeated means it's a list of phone numbers if you have multiple values for one attribute you should define it as a repeated address book this also contains a repeated attribute the person this is the syntax of a simple proto file so once you have this file you need to compile it using the protocol buffers compiler so you can download the the specific compiler for your language whatever the language you are using for your application so once you have that you have to unzip it and you need to go to bin there you can see the proto c execution command proto c and the the source directory where this proto c contains and this is the command that you can use to compile the proto file and you will get the code which is required for encode and send via wire and also for decoding as well and also destination application will have the proto file so the compiler they already have the compiler code so that code can use to decode the proto buff message received at their end so you can go through this all the documentation given by google here and we are going to see our spring boot application but we are going to have a different approach to compile the proto file we have the proto file in our project but we are going to use maven dependency to compile and generate you are seeing my IntelliJ IDE here. Before getting into the code, let me explain what this application actually does. So as part of this application, we are going to have two modules. One is server module and another one is client module. Server module is a application implemented using Spring Boot. Basically, this application gets the data from US Geological Survey Agency, API, which will provide the earthquakes information happened last few years in united states so the spring boot application gets the data by make by making a call to rest api and it gets the data and it will send it to the our front-end application client application implemented using uh, javascript angular and ionic framework and we are going to see the data on front-end application which has been provided with our backend service that is server application so let us see this is the project that i have in my machine and as usual we have a pump file the, the most important dependencies i want to explain here as per google documentation we can use the protobuf compilers to generate our compiler code encode and decode the data but if you are working in a java project there is a maven dependency that will do the same job for us so instead of doing manual you can define the dependency here and you can generate the required code for us just like how you do when you have json up you are going to create the pojos right in the same way we are going to have a protochar maven plugin so it will generate the sources for us 
So it will read the input file, which is a proto, of proto file in this folder, and it will generate the code that is required for serialize the proto of file and send the data via wire. JavaScript application also will have similar kind of setup. It will have the proto of file or at least the compiled code, which can understand the proto of data once it has been received at there and we are going to see how it can be done in a javascript that has been set and another thing we are going to see proto buff this is the file it's proto 3 we are using proto 3 version and java package we define that detector proto buff message earthquake the string double double float and here there is the any complex data types here so this is the proto file we are going to compile it so that it can generate the quite code for us to serialize and deserialize the proto of data so we are using compression time the application JSON or application expert above so that our Spring Boot application can compress the data and can that's what it means the Spring Boot format class we have earthquakes DB so this is the uh, class which will call this particular API and gets the data in CSV file this is the starting point to get the data this method will be used in our controller class to get the data from DB so it's just we mentioned it as DB, but it's not really DB. We are getting the data from external API. We have three endpoints defined here. Get mapping at X string. Actually, we are trying to print the JSON data. It's just string. And the second endpoint also is earthquake. This endpoint provides the protobuf format that is earthquake. So this earthquake file is auto generated by protobuf compiler that you can see here which is so usually when you run the maven clean install it will generate all the required code class the code required for serialize or protobuf message all the code is here available in class part so you don't need to build any pojos or something everything will be there so usually when you are using json you need to create the pojos so other than this there is no much to tell about here and if you are a spring boot or java developer you can easily understand by going through this code however i'm going to provide the link for my github repository there you can see all this complete code for yourself that has been said about server application and we have the client application i'm not uh, familiar with ionic or angular application but i will try to explain you the main components about protobuf in actually where this communication is happening how the code is compiling yeah these two files are auto generated by javascript protobuf actually you have to run the npm install protobuf.js so protobuf.js is the javascript compiler you can go through the documentation that i have been shown here in the site yeah if you see the support for javascript here there is a documented how you can generate the protocol compilers for your javascript code these files for your earthquake details when you have earthquake.proto file in your project in the client project then you need to run the command as per the documentation given on their website i will provide that link on the description section how to compile the earthquake uh, proto file for javascript applications you can follow that and you can generate so once you run that compiler proto c you can, you can see these two files so you have to copy these two files on your project so that your application can understand the data once it is received from the backend service uh, i think other than that i cannot explain more just i want to show you here how the communication is happening between both applications especially we look at both are different applications one is javascript and another is java so proto protobuf can be used as a communication protocol between different kind of languages and i have and also i made a video about protocol buffers how it is better than json uh, please click on the link showing above so that you can know more about protocol buffers how the internal communication happens what is the reason it has come up uh, and how what are the extra advantages it has over json and we are going to see now how it works we run the both applications to run this application we have to run ionic serve so it will open up the browser there you can see the user interface and also you need to start a server application as well the server application is started i started the client application it will open up the browser which is running on 8100 port so it's, it's getting the data so this is a json data and this they want to show the how the data will be received in json format and protobuf format this encoding is happening in the 
client application i will show you that i forgot to show you this encoding is happening here see here fetch json this is the add connection point here and fetch protobuf from so here http headers we are using accept protobuf so this is the endpoint calling and we are getting the data passing the data and showing on our user interface pass protobuf this is the method decode protobuf express decode editor so this is the code which is decoding the protobuf message and it is pushing back to the user interface so basically i want to show you these two applications how they can exchange the data using protobuf as their communication protobuf is much much faster than json and if you want to know about that please see my previous video i'm going to provide the links for these two applications my github repository link you can go through the code and you can try it on your laptop so that you can learn more about protobuf that's it guys hope you enjoyed this video I think you have learned how we can use protobuf as a communication protocol between spring boot application and javascript and as usual i would like to request you to subscribe to my channel and share with your friends so that they can learn it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you don't miss my future videos thank you